Hi everybody, my name is Diego and welcome to the 3F channel. Today we are going to talk about volatility clustering. So we are going to use the K-mean clustering technique on the VIX. As usual, I'm going to do a little bit of background, uh, but if you know already everything and you want to go straight to the code, I will leave a link in the description. I will leave the link to download the code as well. So let's have a look at the VIX. The VIX is a real-time index representing the market's expectations for volatility in percentage over the coming 30 days, based on the S&P 500 index options. It is also called the fear gauge, because every time there is a spike, there is the fear of a market crash. And we can see this in two spikes here in uh, 2008, about the Lehman Brothers financial crisis, and one more recently about the COVID crisis. K-means clustering. K-means aims to partition and observations into K-clusters groups. The K-clusters are formed in such a way that they minimize within cluster variances, squared Euclidean distances. It's easier to explain k-means with an example. So imagine we have the, the observations in the graph below. And imagine we have to create some groups in order to group them. It would make sense to create three groups like this. One, two, and three. So imagine that we, we would have some cluster centers that are called centroids. And probably the clusters we have chosen will be the, the one to minimize the sum of the square distance of each observation from its respective cluster centers. Please note that to create those groups, we have made an important assumption, that is, that we have three groups, three clusters. In reality, we never make this assumption because we test the k-mean algorithm with several number of clusters. And in the end, we choose the number of clusters that best fits the, the data we have. And you are going to see this in the code. Okay, so here is the code. Um, as usual, I will leave a link in the description for you to download this file. Um, we are in Google Colab, so either you can download it or you can put it in your Google Colab drive. Okay, let me zoom a little bit. All right, so the code is divided into five points. First, we import the libraries, then we import and pre-process the data, then we fit the k-mean algorithm, then we analyze the results, and then we plot them. Okay, so at this step, we are importing the libraries. Nothing particularly difficult, so matplot, pandas, numpy, and sklearn. Not everything of sklearn, only the k-mean and the standard scalar. And then we are importing Y Finance, that is the API to download uh, our financial data. In the next step, we are going to import the data and uh, pre-process it. Yeah, so we are importing the data for the VIX future. I will highlight the code that is most important. I will not go through every line of the code because um, in case you can download the file and have a look at it. It's nothing difficult. Um, so in, the, in this line, we are setting the ticker for the VIX future. And in this line, we are actually downloading it for the maximum period we have. This, this is the result. So it's the VIX from 1990, I think, more than 30 years of uh, VIX future. It's the same that we have seen pre previously in the, in the video. 
Then we are going to initialize the variables. And here we are going to scale them. To do that, we are using the standard scaler of k-min. Uh, so the standard scaler basically computes a standardization of the data. So we remove the mean and we divide by the standard deviation in order to have a, and here you can see the result, um, distribution of data that has mean zero and variance equal to one. At this point, we are ready for the k-min algorithm. Please remember that, as, as I said, we are not so sure of how many clusters to use. And that's why we have a for loop here. A for loop where the number of clusters goes from one to 10. And then we fit we fit the k-min algorithm to our data that is in that in this case are the scaled data so as you can see the training of th of this algorithm is very very easy and very very fast it's done so now we can analyze the results i'm not going into the detail of the code because it's um, a simple plot so what you see here, on the x-axis, you see the number of clusters, while on the y-axis, you see the distance, the minimized distance. This distance is exactly our um, objective of the algorithm. So the, the objective function that the algorithm is trying to minimize. Of course, increasing the number of clusters uh, this minimized function gets lower and lower to the point of being zero where the number of clusters is equal to the number of data we have. So why do we need this graph? We need this graph to find the optimal number of clusters and we are looking for an elbow of this curve. You can find the elbow of this curve in the region between two and four. So prob probably the most uh, significant number of clusters will be three. So now we are going to plot the results. Uh, we are going to plot it for two, three and four number of clusters. Let me run it. Okay. Okay, so here you can see the graph of the VIX. Uh, where the colors represent the clusters and the two red lines represent the cluster centers. So this is coherent with the classical explanation of uh, volatility in which we have periods of low volatility and periods of high volatility. When the volatility is low, it, tend, um, it tends to, to remain low. When the volatility is high, it tends to remain high. Um, the graph looks fine, but probably it's not the best one. So let's have a look at three clusters. Okay, so the same idea applies where the colors are the clusters and the red lines are the cluster centers or centroids. Um, we have periods of very low volatility, periods of, say, medium volatility, and periods of very high volatilities, in which probably there was the fear of a market crash. This graph looks uh, much, much better than the, the two clusters version, uh, but let's have a look at the four clusters one. Okay. And this is the last one. Also, this looks quite good. So probably the, the, the most significant clustering is for three and for four clusters. Okay, there is one last thing I want to mention. Let me run the transition matrix for three clusters. Okay. 
Now, the transition matrix is a matrix in which you can see how many times the VIX moved from one cluster to the other. It can be done in absolute or in relative terms. In this case, it's absolute. So you can interpret it like this. The rows in this case are the starting cluster. The columns are the final cluster. So we have that the VIX 4,557 times was in the cluster zero, so the lower cluster, and it remained there. 200 times moved from the lower to the medium cluster, and interestingly, one time moved, well, say jumped from the lower cluster to the upper cluster. If there are no jumps, this matrix should be symmetric, but it isn't. At the beginning, I thought I got it wrong. Instead, I got it right um, because there was a jump. And to be more precise, there was a jump on 2018, February where the, the VIX jumped from the lower volatility zone to the higher volatility zone. Let me show you the graph. Okay, this is that February 2018, where over a weekend, the VIX moved from 17 to 37 with huge swings in volatility was crazy and it was called the Volmageddon. Well, that's all for today. And with this crazy graph, it's time to end. I hope you liked the video. Please feel free to write some feedbacks in the comments. And what would you like to see the next time? Thank you for your attention and see you to the next video.